people. Hey world. I still exist. Look who it is. She still exists. <laughs> it has been a while since I made an appearance on our YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh, I thought oh. it was I thought it was Samuel and David now. Yeah. <laughs> so it would seem. Um, no, yeah, Sam was in Korea for two weeks. Yeah. Without me. Oh man, it was an incredible trip. What you guys have seen so far is basically just the stuff that I've done with the, with the group, the other YouTubers. Yeah. And what's left to come is a really exciting solo trip I do with David afterwards. So. Yeah, so yeah. Sam was invited to join a trip uh, organized by the Tourism Board with a whole bunch of YouTubers. That was for a week and he loves Korea so much that he was like, I'm sticking around for another week yeah. to do my own thing. Yeah, exactly. So that's coming up next. That's coming up next, but what we're going to do is try cooking some Korean food. We're going to make yes. some kimchi fried rice known as kimchi bokumbap. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be chamchi kimchi bokumbap because Ooh. I'm putting tuna in it. Tuna. I see I see the ingredients that you've prepared. You've got egg, you've got a whole bunch of different I've things. I've been practicing. And while we cook and eat and hang out, we're also going to do a Q&A. Yeah. I asked you guys on Instagram to submit your questions. There's a lot of them. There's been some great questions. As, yeah. as a little bit of a sneak peek, we're going to announce our next trip mm -hmm. that we're doing. Oh. And so stay tuned for that. All right, let's cook. Voila. So first up, I'm going to show you the ingredients before I start cooking. So I got some rice. I hope it was the right kind. I don't know. Um, some enoki mushrooms. We've got eggs, tuna, garlic, kimchi. I have two jars of kimchi if we run out. Uh, some dried seaweed flakes with sesame seeds. Gochujang red, no, hot pepper bean paste. Yeah. I'm gonna put lots of this. Sesame oil, and that is all we need. So first up, the rice. Last time I bought sushi rice, so I had to wash it. Um, this one doesn't seem to be sushi rice. At least it doesn't say so in the bag. So I'm not washing it. <laughs> you just grabbed it without Working looking? Mistake, maybe. I just went in there, I grabbed rice. When you have an aisle full of rice with like 20 different options, you just reach a point where you're like... <laughs> you don't care? <laughs> whatever. <laughs> just, just grab whatever? Okay. Exactly. So for every cup of rice, I'm putting in two cups of water, basically double. Right. So we're going with five. And... So how many times have you made this dish now? This will be my third time. Okay. So, so I feel I, you, like... You know what they say, third time's the charm, right? There you go. <laughs> so I'm adding a bit of salt because my mom normally does when she makes rice. Mm -hmm. And a little bit of oil because I've seen her do the same. I'm just copying here. That's how I learn. Yeah. And while the rice cooks, I'm going to put it on high and then lower the temperature. We're going to begin answering questions. Shall we ask you first? You want no, to no. First? You're, you're in front of the camera, so you get to go oh, first. So let's begin from the mm -hmm. top. The first question actually is, where will your next adventure take you? <laughs> Go ahead. Okay, so we just planned this trip. Super last, spontaneously. Super spontaneously, like last week. Yeah. We were sitting at the table outside having a little barbecue and someone was like, why don't you guys drive out east? That would be a nice road trip for you guys and the dog. And we were like, yes, it would be. And by the end of that day, we had booked a car. And the end of that week, we had booked Airbnbs. So we're going to be driving out east to the Maritimes. We're going to be stopping in Quebec, New Brunswick, Nova Scotia, and PI. It's a road trip. Me, Sam, my mom, my dad, Togo, the German Shepherd. And my dad. And your dad. For a bit. Yeah, we're going to be meeting up with Sam's parents in New Brunswick. It's, and it's, his dad's tagging along. It's going to be pumpy and poppy. Yeah. <laughs> Bobby. Bobby. And Okay, that's funny because one of the questions... I, I just got to interject for a second, sorry. Now that we're still on that same question. Yes. I was super jet lag when I came back from Korea and I, we had a big asado. I went downstairs, I took a giant nap and I woke up and you came up. The first thing you said is, we're going, we're going out east. 
<laughs> Sam, Sam couldn't so remember. So it was a major surprise for me. <laughs> we had had this discussion at the table and Sam went to sleep and no. then he couldn't remember that we talked about the trip. I, I know that it was mentioned like Atlantic Canada's nice and something like that, but yeah. there, there was no mention of a trip. That was it. That was that's it. how it came together. And, and that's how it came together, which is amazing. You know, sometimes these spontaneous trips mm -hmm. are, are honestly the best. I think so too. Yeah. And I was going to say, stick around because the next question that oh. I just scrolled past, it's how's, how's, how's Pumpy and where's Pumpy? Pumpy, oh, my, da my dad. My dad's doing fantastic. He always loves this time of year because it's like spring turning into summer. It's bike season for him in Fredericton. Mm -hmm. And so that means he's out biking most days. And yeah, he's, he's, he's enjoying life. Like a typical day for him, he'll go biking. Yeah. He comes back, he likes to listen to music. He likes especially like chill music. Mm -hmm. uh, what's the word for that? It's like alternate, alternative chill country. Hop? No, lo -fi? it's like, no, no, it's not lo-fi. There's in, no <laughs> indie folk. My indie dad loves folk. to listen to indie folk. Yeah. He likes to spend time on the computer. He watches our videos and yeah, he has, a, he plays bridge. Um, and he does. Uh, he's 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 a very social person, so he likes to go out and have yeah. have family dinners and, and things. And he's coming traveling with us. And he's coming traveling with us. He he's been to all the places that we're going, mm -hmm. so he's going to be a a great person to have along. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So my sister Ashley sent in a whole bunch of questions. <laughs> Hers are really funny. Um, yeah. Let's start with the normal one. Okay. If you were not travelers, what would you work as? Well, we studied to be teachers. I think yeah. we probably. In my opinion, we'd probably be teaching somewhere around the world. Internationally. Internationally, yeah. We'd, yeah. we'd probably like teach somewhere for two or three years, mm -hmm. go to another country, different region of the world. I remember that's actually, when we went back to school to become teachers, that, that was, was the plan. That was, it was kind of our, but it was kind of our backup plan. We still wanted to try making videos, have a travel yeah. vlogs, but that was kind of like our backup plan. Like if, yeah. if this all doesn't work out, we're going to teach around the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> laughing. Because at one point, I guess when you were finishing high school, yeah. you wanted to be like a pharma, a pharmacist, a pharmacist. Yeah. Pharma. Oh, it's, you know, to be, being a, being a pharmacist in Canada is a great job. You yeah. make, you make really good money. Also, I mean, you can work for a company, but you can also run your own pharmacy. You can have your own small pharmacy potentially. But yeah, I mean, for me, it would have been the wrong fit Counting for sure. Pills. No, that's not, that wouldn't have been for me. <laughs> and I don't know what I would have done like before considering teaching because when I was in high school, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Like, no, but before you met me, you were going to take a master's in like international development or something. Yeah. Or... And like go overseas, basically. I wanted a job abroad. Yeah. That was it. But I didn't know in what. I, I guess the theme for both of us is we didn't find out what we wanted to do until a little bit later. Yeah. You know, like mid to late twenties, really. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it took a while. Mm -hmm. And in the meantime, we taught English in South Korea. That's how we met. Yep. In case any of you didn't know. That was another question. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we answered that. <laughs> yes. Um, another one from Ashley. Okay. What is the one thing your spouse does that makes you automatically roll your eyes? I feel like I feel There's like a lot of I things. feel like we roll each. Uh, I feel like we roll our eyes at each other a lot. Often. You know, the one of the the best and worst things about our jobs is that we we spend way more time together as a couple than an average couple yeah because we work together we live together we travel together it's almost 24 7. Mm -hmm. and so yeah we we both kind of have a master class and how to annoy one another i can think another. of something <laughs> yeah my pet peeve is wet towels oh, like when sam showers takes the wet towel when i'm in the room he will hang it up if I'm not in the room, that wet towel ends up on my side of the bed, my clothing, on furniture, and it's just like, why? You know how to hang it up. You know what? That probably happens about 10% of the time. That's all I'm willing to admit. To. <laughs> okay, my pet peeve for you is you, you, you leave your clothes out all over the place. Like they're really? just, yeah, you just fling them all over the place. And like, but they're organized. And there's sometimes when I'm, when I have to wake up in the middle of the night and go to the bathroom, I'm like tripping on things that you've left on the floor. So we're both, we're, so. we're, we're, we're both kind of slobs. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. That but okay. Next question. It's about making videos. Oh. Who edits the videos and who's better at pieces to camera? You know what? You're a better editor than me. <laughs> for sure. You, Audrey has more of an eye for detail. How it usually works is I do most of the filming mm -hmm. and I kind of do the rough cut. I get everything down on the timeline. I do some speed ramping, which is like speeding up clips, slowing down things, doing image stabilizations, 
But for the most part, like once I've done that, I usually hand it over to you. Yeah, and, I do uh, the second edit yeah. and try to make things tidy. Tidy. I'm a very picky <laughs> about things, so I have yeah. to have final more, more say. So, more so than me. So I was so. like, yeah, it's done, uploaded. Yeah. I'm like, I, no, I mean, no. the, 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 the one benefit is I might get a video done quicker, but yeah. you you have you'd spend longer and with more attention to detail and yeah. the final product looks better. So yeah, you're a better editor for sure. Yeah, definitely. Okay, why don't we go ask my dad some questions? There's questions on yeah. here for him too. And we have the the, the nice Togo. new deck out there. And I don't know if you guys have seen the video. We made the we made a big project mm -hmm. about the, with home Renovision DIY. DIY. And another shout out for those guys. I really miss them, Jeff, Max, and Michelle. Mm -hmm. Oh man, such nice people, and they came and uh, basically built this amazing deck for us. And so yeah. your dad is out there with the dog. Let's go say hi. Let's go say hi. Togo's trying to get in, so let's go. <laughs> Togi bear. Okay, so questions with my dad, Daniel, who has made appearances on the English channel. Yeah, I've every been once drafted. in a while. Yes. Yeah. Your, your last appearance, you were El Jefe. El Jefe. <laughs> yes, building a building deck. A deck. Yeah. yeah. He's also yeah. a bit of a celebrity on the Spanish channel, if, if you follow along there. Yeah. But first question for you. Who is going to win Copa America? Copa America. I don't think it's going to be Argentina for oh. sure because they are playing like awful. They got uh, beaten uh, by Colombia. By Colombia oh, to nil. To and, uh, you know what, guys? Yeah. It's a big issue here. But I don't think it's going to be Argentina. Maybe. I'm still going to cheer for Argentina. Nah, you know what? We have to be realistic. <laughs> Probably Brazil is gonna take it. Watch, watch them watch, watch them win now. Yeah. <laughs> watch them win. Okay, next question is about our recent trip to Argentina. Yeah. Um, what were the most surprising or unexpected things? Unexpected things. What was unexpected for you? I can think of something unexpected for my dad when when you met one of your fans. Oh well, in Mendoza that, at the bus yeah. terminal or at the airport. Yeah, yeah, that that was something that uh, was unexpected because the guy came, <laughs> the guy came from behind, uh, stealth. <laughs> you know, he didn't say a, a, a word and he grabbed me from behind, and everybody was telling us, "Oh, be careful because of the crime in uh, Argentina, this and that." We actually didn't have any problem with crime, Not at all. but you're always on uh, on edge. So I was gonna turn around and suck him, you know. I thought it was, <laughs> I thought it was a mug or something like that. And the guy, all he wanted was a, a picture. A, a picture. Selfie. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. he just uh, handed the phone uh, to my uh, daughter here. He didn't say one word. No, yeah. I think he was a little nervous, a yeah. little excited to meet you. So yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He but just something to keep in mind, guys, is we're we're pretty friendly. If you see us yes. in, in person, just come say hi. We, just we, maybe don't grab us from we, behind. We, yeah. we, we, we love to meet, meet you guys. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. it's nice to meet people uh, mm -hmm. from the uh, channel. Okay, next one is, what's your favorite food or cuisine? Ooh. Cuisine, well, that's an easy, an easy one. I'm a carnivore from uh, the Pampas of Argentina. So for me, it's gotta be uh, asado, parrilla, barbecue, any way you wanna call it, you know? But- uh, With yeah. wine. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, we need a Malbec with it. Uh, with a good Malbec, yeah. yeah. And also, I like uh, seafood a lot. Yeah. You know, Peruvian food, yeah, mm -hmm. very good Peruvian well, food. They have yes. an excellent uh, cuisine. A lot more uh, variety than in Argentina, but of course, uh, having the, being born in a meat-eating country, I'm always for a, a good uh, meat. Yeah, barbecue. And you're gonna get to try some excellent seafood in Atlantic Canada on our upcoming trip. Yeah. In this trip, we're gonna see if we can get some, uh, you know, fresh. Uh, the problem, is, yeah, no, the problem here in Canada is that uh, most of uh, fish and seafood that you can have access in the big cities has been frozen, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not as you know, it doesn't have that uh, ocean flavor. kind of. Uh, when we go to Peru, for instance, and we have a uh, fish and seafood, it's got that smell like the uh, ocean water. You mm -hmm. know, like salty mm -hmm. water, uh, yeah. and it, it, it feels like it just came out of the uh, yeah. the ocean. And that's the part that I really miss. I yeah. think that uh, for a good seafood, you have to be eating it by the, uh, the seaside. You know, it's like some place where you have the ocean and you can just go and. <laughs> I'm gonna check on the rice. <laughs> Update on the food. Okay, now we're taking a break from the questions to keep cooking. 
come on over get closer so the rice is almost ready whoops I'm just waiting for the water to finish evaporating essentially and in the meantime I've heated up a frying pan with a little bit of oil and we're going to just cook the garlic first let it turn golden that's the first step and once that's done we can start adding the the kimchi we're gonna cook the kimchi which is fermented cabbage yeah I wish we had smell a vision for this because <laughs> the fumes Ooh, coming strong. out of this jar it's potent like even my dad the other day was asking like what's in that grocery bag what is that yeah, if if it's, you've never smelled kimchi, it's it's a bit shocking the first time. Yeah. For many people, it's an acquired taste. But if you are going to try it for the first time and you're not sure if you like fermented cabbage, we recommend having it cooked like this in a fried rice. Yes. Because it, it cuts the sourness. Okay, so my garlic is starting to turn nice and brown, kind of golden. The rice is also ready, so I've turned that off just to your left. Here's the rice, guys. And we are opening our jar of kimchi. I only have like a third of the jar left, so I'm just gonna pour the whole thing in. I thought you got another one. Yeah, that's the other one. Oh, are we gonna get, are we gonna use more? Uh, more the merrier. The, the more the merrier. Oh yeah. The spicier the better. So we are adding a bit more at Sam's request. Oh yeah. Just a little bit more. Guys, this is kimchi bokumbap after all. This is the main ingredient. Oh, no. So now we're just going to let that cook for a little bit and then we're going to add tuna. So you can add ham to this. The recipe I was looking at calls for bacon, yeah. but we don't have any. And I remember when I lived in Korea, you could order chamchi kimchi bokumbap. Yeah, that was always one of the special, like you'd pay about 500 won more or, yeah. or 1,000 won more and you get you could add, add tuna to it. And it gives you some packs a bit of protein in there, a little bit more flavor yeah. as well. Oh, if you could only smell this, my goodness. <laughs> I've got to say, it doesn't smell amazing, but the final product is pretty good. Even my dad liked it. He tried it the other day and he was surprised. Go ask him, go ask him. <laughs> it was pretty good. Yeah. But <laughs> after eating that dish, you're not going to be doing much kissing. I can guarantee you that, you know. <laughs> It's not. My, yeah. my, my, oh my. A lot of garlic. It's all garlic <laughs> and that uh, cabbage is, yeah. is potent. It's potent, so, yeah. yeah. Next, I'm going to add a bit of sesame oil for flavor, but also because things are starting to get crispy. And I'm going to add in a whole can of tuna. Plop. Plop, that's it. And we're just going to let that cook a little bit. And after that, we'll move on to the mushrooms, mushrooms, the enoki mushrooms. So rice is at the very end? Yeah, yeah. towards the end. Okay. We want to make sure all of our other ingredients are cooked because the rice is ready. Yeah. Next, we are adding the mushrooms. They're stringy, long and stringy. So we just wash those. We cut off the root. They're delicious. And now I'm just separating them. Do you add sugar to your recipe? I know some call for a bit of sugar. No. No? No? Pure spice. Huh? I mean, I'm following a recipe, but I'm also adapting it. Mm -hmm. I have mushroom in my hair. <laughs> Next. Next. Rice. Our mushrooms are fairly cooked. So I'm just going to plop this in. To bring the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we've got to feed three hungry people. And extras. Excited about Korean food. Togi, you want something to eat? He's sniffing. He's like, "What's for me, guys? This is this is where he waits when he right when he wants to be fed. When he wants to be fed. That's the feeding corner. He go, this is we, yeah, we call it the feeding corner. He sits here and waits. He's like, "Yeah, I'm ready for food. What do you say, Togo? You want to eat? You want to eat? Huh? You want to eat?" First, I need to finish cooking our food, Togo. Then we feed you, baby. Then we feed you. Two more things to do. First, I need to add some of the juice from the kimchi. Yeah. Now, there's never a whole lot of juice in here, so I try and get any bit I can, but... So you basically just hold back the cabbage and let it pour yeah, out. Yeah, it's just gonna be like drip, drip. This jar, oh my gosh, this one has even less than the last <laughs> one. 
We're not getting a whole lot of juice out of here, guys. That was disappointing. Anyways, let's add the paste. We like it spicy. Put lots. Put yeah. a big heaping tablespoon that looks more like two tablespoons. You gonna add more? Yeah, let's put a bit more. Put more. Why not? Why not? One more scoop. Our invention, anyway. <laughs> In terms of measurements. Yeah, if we're gonna err on, on, on the side of it not being spicy or spicy, we're all in for the spice. spice so yeah. Spice wins. So you're just gonna stir that a bit? Now we just fry the rice. This is this is fascinating for me too because I'm learning how to make this from Audrey just by filming and watching. Well, I'm just following different recipes and combining them, so are you gonna any... are you gonna try to burn the rice on the bottom? Yes. Oh, that's the and best if part. any Koreans are watching, you guys can yeah, Give please. Me your advice. How can I make this better with what I have in Canada? I saw someone making it in Korea once and they just put in a tiny bit of sugar. Sugar? Yeah. I think it's a bit late for sugar now. <laughs> now that everything's cooked. Yeah. It, it sure looks good though. It's, it's coming together. So we've been waiting patiently over here for Audrey to finish cooking so that we can take care of this. Almost ready. My shirt is a bit dirty because I was working at the yard there, the garden. Uh. So that's fine. Look at this, South Africa. Yeah. Cabernet Sauvignon, 2016, Cathedral Cellar. South Africa makes fantastic wines. Probably some of the most underrated wines in the world, I'd say. They have good wines, yeah. They, they, Amazing they, wines. They're pretty, uh, pretty strong. We got to go to Stellenbosch twice, and uh, I mean, my gosh, there's some beautiful places to stay out there. Great for wine tourism as well. It's like the it's like the Mendoza of uh, South Africa. Let's see what this baby is made out of. Yeah. We'll see. I'll tell you. In a jiffy. <laughs> oh! oh! That came out nice. This, this one is complaining a little bit. You know? I don't think he liked it very much what I did to it. You know? <laughs> he knows that he's gonna lose the the bottle very very soon here. You know. So. All right, let's let's try the first one. Yeah, one one nice thing about living in Canada is we have a great selection of wines in terms of the countries available. We've got, I mean, of course we've got Argentina, but we also have South Africa, we have New Zealand, Australia, U.S., Italy, Spain, France. Yeah, we try uh, just about everything. Yeah. And uh, to be honest, uh, a lot of good uh, wines out there. Yeah. You cannot always say, no, this country has the best wines because uh, today, uh, there is so much uh, variety and uh, countries that uh, before they did not produce, today they're coming up uh, pretty good, you know, pretty yeah, strong. Yeah. So yeah, we try to to buy a little bit of uh, everything and to try and, and see what they're made out of, you know. Let's oh, try this. All right, Audrey, oh, come okay. join us for come join us for a salute, cheers, a salute. for a cheers. Okay. All right, salute. Cheers. Cheers. Salute. cheers, salute, cheers. Ooh. I like that. Me too. That's Toki, would you like some wine, my friend? It's a nice wine. Oh no, it's okay, guys. That's a, it's a, it's a winner. What kind of grape is it? I wasn't listening to the whole. It's Cab Sav. I'm not gonna read the label because it drives me crazy what they write in these things. You know. <laughs> Here we go again. Chocolate, berries, apple, pear. Eh, I want wine. I, if I want a pear or an apple, I go to the fruit store, you know? And they, should, they should put some other stories Cheers. behind the label, you know? Very nice though. Packed with flavor, goes down smooth, full yeah. body. It's a nice, uh, it's a nice wine. Yeah. yeah. And it's not that, uh, that much of a uh, vintage, you know, because it's only what, 2016. So, but for the, uh, for the age is, uh, it's a, it's a good wine. Yeah. yeah. And this is the proof. You see? That's the proof. <laughs> it's gone. Right. It's gone. Now, now we wait for the, for the, for the food to come to the table. Otherwise we're going to have to uncork <laughs> another food. one. Sometimes three, you know. It all depends how, how early do we start, right? Audrey, pressure the pressure's on. I'm so close to being done. Oh, we're just kidding. Take I've your already time. turned off the rice. Now I just need to fry some eggs. Mm -hmm. so yeah, because uh, I mean you can eat it without egg, but it looks so much nicer with the egg on it top. Needs the egg, yeah. For presentation Otherwise, and it texture. Complete. Okay, time for the fried eggs. So you basically, you want to fry it kind of like sunny side up. You want the egg to be able yes. to crack on the rice. Yes. That's the goal. You want it a little bit runny and soft. Yeah, normally I don't like eggs runny, but in this circumstance, I make an exception because yeah. it tastes better when you break 
the yolk over the rice. My creation is complete. Look at that, egg on top, seaweed to round yeah. it up. Maybe some more seaweed, why not? Why not? It's seaweed and sesame seeds. Yeah, it's so good. Oh man, that's the best, one of the best parts is the seaweed. Yes. Now we feast. Okay, sounds in the frame, good. <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. The food is ready, ta-da! The moment of truth. Yeah. The kimchi chumchi bokumbap. Kimchi chumchi bokumbap. <laughs> I never thought I'd see my dad eating Korean food, but I made it for him the other day and he was like, this is good. You should make it again. You didn't even know it was Korean. You just liked it. <laughs> I'm breaking my egg, guys. I was just saying it, you know. No. <laughs> he ate the whole bowl and came back for more. <laughs> That's how I know. It's good. That is but good. I draw the line at the seaweed. <laughs> oh yeah, he asked for no seaweed. <laughs> no. Because he apparently just choked on it, eating it dry. <laughs> yeah, I tried one just a few minutes ago. He did not agree with me. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boy, it's, mm. it's uh, picante. Yeah, no? it's very, very spicy. spicy. Yeah, spicy. the hot Hi. pepper. We put extra gochujang sauce in. Mm -hmm. mm. So, mm. I oh, thought good. while we eat, maybe we can do some questions. Do you want to pick a few? So I've been... No, there are some really good questions. All oh, right, there's a question for me. Oh, Sam, when are you going back to India? Well, I'd love to go back again soon. If I do go back, it's likely going to be with David again. I had so much fun traveling with David, and so. Let me just say, Sam has <laughs> not finished editing the yeah. videos from his last trip to India. No. There's like a whole collection that still needs no. to be published, so probably not soon. Guys, we have a big India series coming out in the uh, over the summer months. Finally gonna get around to editing those. Okay, a place in Europe that you'd like to visit that we haven't been to yet. Ooh, that's a good question. For you too. It's the place in Europe you would like to visit. I'm gonna say Norway. Greece. Uh, Greece? I never I never been in Greece. Yeah. I'd like to go to Norway. Yeah. Because of the, for the nature. During the summer month. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah, exactly. We got enough of that uh, in Canada. We, we have enough winter in Canada. <laughs> we don't need extra winter. I think I would probably also choose somewhere in Scandinavia. Like, I'd love to see the fjords in Norway or like summer in Sweden. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've been to Finland. We'd love mm -hmm. that. I'd, lo I'd like to go back to Finland. Okay, let's see That's some more. That's just so expensive up there. Would you ever do a fan meetup? We've done one yeah. once before. That was fun. Mm -hmm. In Lima. You know what? I'd love, I'd love to do an asado meetup sometime. Yes. Where we cook a barbecue and invite some of you guys to come over and, and share it with us. That we, would be fun. We will do that someday, I mm -hmm. promise. Mommy, there's some for you too if you want some. I want don't. I will be a rose. Okay. Mm -hmm. I got mm -hmm. that, huh? mm -hmm. Here's a question for you guys. Mm -hmm. How does the whole family learn? learn how to speak Spanish. Do you speak to each other in Spanish outside of the videos? Well, for my parents, Spanish is their first language. <clears throat> yeah. I was born in Argentina. My wife was born in Peru. Mm -hmm. So we're both uh, Spanish-speaking uh, countries. And while these uh, little girls were uh, growing up, we kind of forced them to uh, talk to us in Spanish. And mm -hmm. the language that we use at the house here inside, it was Spanish. So they got to learn uh, <clears throat> that part too. I remember the language at home was always the opposite of the language we were using in school. Yeah. So when we lived in Argentina and spoke Spanish all day, they would try to make us speak English and like watch English TV mm. shows and you would read English books with yeah. us. And once we came to Canada, it was like, okay, now you need to work on your Spanish. And that's <laughs> what we would speak at home. That's it. A lot of people are asking also, you, do you dream in English or do you dream in Spanish? Both. Both? Yeah. Yeah, both. <laughs> you probably can wash yeah. those hanging out of your mouth. I would say if I'm in a Spanish speaking environment, like after spending three months in Argentina, my dreams were in Spanish. Yeah. If I'm here and I hear English all day, I'll dream in English. It's funny how the brain works. The thing that I really do in, in Spanish, yes or yes, is when you're driving and something happened to you, somebody cut you off or stuff like that you curse in Spanish <laughs> because it's it's a so, default. <laughs> that language it has no equal to you know to let it out like <laughs> the English is kind of a Lame. short and reduced right mm -hmm. but in Spanish you have a multitude of uh, ammunition to throw out you know <laughs> like I mean it's so flowerful you know? <laughs> wow that's Flo awesome florido is the language so you, you you know when you have to curse really bad then it comes out in Spanish from 
<laughs> from, from, from the heart. <laughs> from, it's, it's visceral. You know? Visceral. Yeah. <laughs> No, oh, this is a good question for Audrey. Audrey, do you feel more connected to your Argentinian roots or your Peruvian ones? Mm. That is a good question. Um, I would say I know quite a bit about both cultures, thanks to my parents, but I've never lived in Peru. I spent my childhood in Argentina, so that to me is more familiar. Like when I go back, it feels like home. Whereas Peru, like I have family there and I love visiting, but I haven't spent like an extended period of time. But I think in terms of like food and cuisine, you, you like- I love Peruvian food, yeah. love it. Peru feel com feels comfortable for me. Mm -hmm. I feel at home when I go to Peru. Mm -hmm. I feel really at home. I feel really comfortable. I, I don't feel like I'm uh, out of place, like in a, in a different country. I feel like I'm at home, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's a big part due to family. Like yeah. your, your grandma is such a, a Soila is super nice, mm -hmm. and your aunt Roxana and Coco, cousin, yeah. they've been super nice. They've hosted us on multiple occasions. Mm -hmm. Your cousin, Luciana, her boyfriend Georgie speaks really good English. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we learned that when he drank wine one day. <laughs> <laughs> you got it out of him, man. I got it out of him. I'm yeah, like, yeah. wow. You pried it out of him. He's fluent. Mm -hmm. I wonder if he's watching this. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so yeah, family has been really nice to us. We've also been hosted in Brazil. Your relatives are really nice there. And we've also met your relatives in Buenos Aires. They've been super friendly. We went, mm -hmm. we actually had a, our last night in Argentina was spent with them. We went and visited basically a family house and there was a big gathering of, of your cousins. and Until two in the morning and oh. we had to cut it short because the two of us were falling asleep at Guys, the table. We're not used to that. How, how many, like 15 people? You wouldn't believe how many bottles of wine we popped that night. Uh, what did I tell you? <laughs> it's the first time I saw Samuel falling asleep, you know what I mean? <laughs> you know, with his head, you know, bobbing like that. Right? For me, um, the, the, your, all of your relatives on both sides of the family in, in South America have, have made us feel very welcome. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we like going to Argentina, we like going to Peru, we like going to Brazil. That was a really good question, actually. That's Togo. Uh, one of the questions was related to like what we do when we're not filming, when we're not traveling. Like, what's a typical day when we're not when we're not on the road? We're editing. Editing. <laughs> like yeah. all day when we're not filming, yeah. we're editing. We, we usually, like, it's, it's gotten to the point now, we used to be, like, nomadic and we would try to film and edit at the same time. Now, we don't travel as much, but when we do travel, we film basically all day. And then when we get back from a trip, we have so much editing to do. So a typical day for us is honestly spent in front of our computers. I mean, we do have a flexible schedule, so if something comes up, like, we can meet people for lunch or dinner or mm. if it was a family dinner. But most of the time, we're just editing. We try to eat really healthy at home. We make fresh juice every morning. We try to eat salads. I try to usually like <laughs> lose weight. I always expand on the road and I try to shrink when I'm at home. I would say when we're home, we just try to spend a lot of time with family. Like yeah. we normally stay with my parents and then also visit Sam's parents. Yeah, we, we exercise, we work out, we, we like to cook, we like to eat at home as well. Mm -hmm. But it's pretty ordinary it's pretty ordinary <laughs> it's mostly anything mostly, mostly editing. editing they start at uh, eight o'clock in the morning and they go straight till ten o'clock in the evening day no. on day out day in day out day in day out i mean seven days a week oh. it's, yep. it's a full-time job editing these videos i see them and i still cannot believe it you know <laughs> I, I don't understand it, what is it that they have to do, but it takes them forever. Each video will be like maybe 12 hours of work no, to it takes, get it out there. It takes a long time because we have to edit yeah. it, then we have to upload it, then we have to do research for like, it's called Ooh. SEO, search engine optimization, tags, write a description, sometimes we do scripts, like actually getting a video takes quite a bit of work. And then we also have blogs and we have other, other work commitments. And so mm -hmm. we do work long hours, but we do have flexibility in our schedule, which is nice. Man, that was good rice, huh? Um, would you look at that? <laughs> All done. Done. I'm, I'm gonna get some more. <laughs> All right, oh. we'll pause. No. Uh, I'm like a little floating head here. <laughs> You know what? That turned out really well, didn't it? The, the food, rice, yeah. it was so good. It, the wine. it is so filling that I'm like semi comatose right now. Like, mm. You know what? I just realized I don't think I've ever had red wine with food that spicy. It gets to the point that when you're having, you've had enough spicy food, you can't you, taste the wine. You don't taste the wine anymore. Not a I was good like, combination. Yeah, now I get why there's specific pairings. But yeah. I mean, I enjoyed it at the beginning. 
but the food was great. You did yeah. a good job with that. They're good each on their own. Yeah. And now we're falling asleep, so we decided let's go to the park, let's walk, get some exercise, and yeah. we'll do the rest of the Q&As. I'm so little next to you. Look at that. <laughs> Floating head. More questions. More questions. The next one is, how do you choose the places you go? Kind of random sometimes, to be honest. I would say a lot of it is personal preference. Like, where do we want to go? Are there any countries or, or cultures that fascinate us that we haven't yet really been able to explore? Um, so oftentimes it's just, where do we want to go? What yeah. do we want to see? Um, sometimes it is for work. So like we may be invited by a tourism board or we may have a cool project to work on, but we don't really take a lot of those throughout the no. year. So we most like we do, I'd say we do eight, like 90% independent travel. Yeah. 10% maybe work related. And then oftentimes we choose a location to visit family. Like Peru, yeah. we keep going back to every single year because yeah. we have family there Ar essentially. Ar Argentina, the same reason. Yeah. And there's, yeah, there's certain countries that call us, like we're just drawn to time uh -huh. and again. For a while it was Thailand, uh -huh. Korea for a bit. I will say we are country repeaters. So yeah. like a lot of people want to always visit a new place and like yeah. maybe make it to a hundred. With us, it's like if we like a place, we'll keep going <laughs> yeah, back over we're, and over I mean, and over. I, I think we're, we're probably at around 70 countries now. Yeah. But we're the slowest, like we've we've put a lot of years on the road. Yeah. There's people who've traveled for a third of our time that have broken over a hundred <laughs> countries. And we're not even close. Yeah. Like we're gonna get there someday, but it's gonna happen like ridiculously slow. And like in some countries we'll stay for like three months. Yeah. You know? Exactly. Like, oh, let's take it easy. Yeah. Let's see more. As, I, more problems. as we've gotten a little older, we do prefer slower travel. Yeah. Um, our preference has changed. When we first did our first backpacking trip in Southeast Asia, we were just whizzing around all mm -hmm. over the place. And that was exhausting. Yeah. Like you reach a point where you're moving around so quickly that it's not fun anymore because you're tired and grumpy. <laughs> Especially you. <laughs> yes, I, I will say yes. <laughs> Another one, how long have y'all been married slash together? How long have we been married, Sam? Can you answer that question? Well, actually, what well, it's late June, mm -hmm. so in a couple of weeks, I can't believe it's still been five years. Our anniversary is coming up. Do you remember yeah. the day we got married? Yeah, yeah, it's J July 12th. It was! <laughs> yes! Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to be celebrating our fifth anniversary and we knew each other two years before we got married, no? Yeah, we met each other in Korea. We basically spent a year teaching together. We yeah. traveled for a year and a bit. And then we came back to We Canada. came back and got married. Yeah, yeah. two years so and a few months. We, we we weren't one of those couples that like were engaged for like five years. We got we got married yeah. pretty quickly. Got it done. We're got like, it done. We're practical people here. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see what else. You know what I didn't realize? When you come to the park and you don't have Wi-Fi, you can't load all the questions and IG stories. So I'm just like picking from what's available at the moment. Okay. A few things you always pack besides obvious things like cell phones and batteries. What do we always pack? I would say you, you often pack a yoga mat and like oh, your workout yes. gloves and like yeah. knee pads. And then, That's probably a weird and thing. Th there's, there's been some trips where I've like actually used them and there's been other trips where I've like just hold it around and it's yeah. just kind of collected dust. Oh, I pack a fan, a, comp a cooling fan for my yeah. computer because of all the all the project rendering we do for video work. Mm -hmm. and sometimes we have slow internet and it takes like 20 hours to upload a video. I need to keep the computer cool. Overheating. So that's kind of a weird item. Not too many people I know pack uh, a, a cooling pad. Uh -huh. What All about right. you? Um, I don't think I pack anything weird worth mentioning, unless you can think of something. Um, you bring a lot of like makeup and stuff, but that's. It's not a lot of. Okay, <laughs> girls, I have a little makeup bag. It's black. It's like this, yeah. like this. It's okay. It's like this size. There's barely anything in there, so that's not a lot of makeup, please! And one more question, this one's in Spanish. Um, how did you guys get the idea to start making videos? Wow. It seemed like a fun thing to do. Uh, we had a camcorder, we had just started dating. I was new in Korea, so I didn't really know the country <laughs> and I wanted to go out and explore. And we thought, yeah. hey, let's bring a camera and document this. And yeah. we made, and we also made skits, like just the two of us, yeah. we would film little skits. Oh, and it was so fun, bad. like it the was process fun. was fun, so but the it, result it, was cringy. It's, it's, it's like the cringy, <laughs> it's the cringiest stuff on the interweb. It really 
Time, times a thousand. Um, so uh, yeah, yeah don't, it, don't please, please don't go to our back catalog. I think we've hidden some of those videos because it was just so bad. Some of them are like, so oh bad that they've actually been hidden. That's, yeah. that's a true story. Um, we were just excited to be in Korea. Mm -hmm. We both like, we were both into travel. We met yeah. each other from our travel blogs. Mm -hmm. And so we're like, what can we do together? Because obviously when you have your own blogs, you're writing for yourself. Yeah. But video was something we could do together. We could film our meal. We could film our day, like going around Seoul. Mm -hmm. And uh, it started from there. Luckily, we've picked up a few tricks <laughs> along the way. Thank God. <laughs> so I think those are all the questions we're going to answer at the park. But yeah, let's go back. And oh, I was going to say, we were going to do show and tell. Sam brought me presents from yeah. South Korea. So I'm going to show you guys and maybe answer a few more questions with Wi-Fi. Okay, now we're back home. So we're going to do show and tell for maybe like half the gifts that Sam brought back because the other ones are down in the basement and they're scattered around and I couldn't find them. <laughs> so this you went to a market in Daejeon? Daegu? Daegu. I got all Daegu. that in Daegu. Yeah. Sam was in Daegu and he bought these like cool wooden bowls. I don't know what they're for. This looks like a cup, a wooden cup. You can have really? yeah, you can soju. Could, you could have soju, you could have big seju. You could use yeah. it for wine here in Canada. Uh, now those 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 could be for rice bowls. Yeah. Yeah. And this uh, maybe for side dishes? I'm yeah. not entirely sure. Yeah. And then this I'm excited about because I can use this to make sundubu jjigae. Yeah. It's is it a stone or a clay pot? It looks like clay. Clay pot so we can make some nice it's, spicy it's, stew. It's heavy duty, isn't it? It's heavy. Yeah, and that's, you got two. That's actually the typical bowl that you that you're served with in Korea. Yeah. And I got face masks. This is red ginseng. Yeah. And the next gift Sam is so embarrassed about. He oh. bought me four lipsticks, guys. Four. Well, you get you gave me one to yes. buy, and I couldn't find the the place that you wanted. Yeah. Like it was what, called Etude House. Etude House, but yes. the one I wanted had gone out of stock. Well, no. Here's the story. No? So I couldn't I couldn't find a, I I didn't find Etude House. So I was going into similar stores, oh. and I was showing them what I had, the product. And then I got two of them, thinking I wasn't going to make it to Etude House. Then on the final night, I found an Etude House in Hongdae. Mm -hmm. And again, that product like went out of stock like three years ago. It was old. My lipstick yeah. was old. And so I got I picked up two from there. So you did get four. Mm -hmm. And uh, So yeah. apparently, Sam went to Nature Republic. Yeah. You went to Etude House in the end. You got two from Etude House, I believe. Two from Etude House. And this one's my favorite. It's the one I'm wearing right now. Mm -hmm. Very natural, very neutral, and it's magnetic. Oh. Look. So are, is that even better than the one I was supposed to get? Yes. Yes? I am very pleased. So I, I'm very pleased. I, I scored some husband points. Yes. <laughs> well, if I ever go somewhere on my own, you may request one item. Uh, no, I get four now. <laughs> and maybe you get four. Um, yeah, but now we're just going to go outside and finish off the Q&A. We'll just do a few more. We're also trying to entertain the dog because my parents have gone out and he's kind of like by the window. Like, are they coming? Where did they yeah. go? What's going on? He, he's, so, he's an anxious pup. Yes. So we're going to play some ball. We've got his chewed up football yeah like literally he's bitten into it so many times that it no yeah. longer has any air well it's really it's kind of gross isn't it <laughs> oh, it's the ball okay yeah, yeah i know um so yeah we'll go find them i'll go get a toki oh, oh, oh. you want to play ball toki oh, you want to play ball toki you want to play ball you want to play ball you always take too long to <laughs> Throw yeah. it! Throw it! Sit! 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 Togo, obey! Sit! Good boy! Good boy! Ho ho ho! And that is how you play ball with Togo. <laughs> and he has, his, he has his green ball, which he loves too. Where's that? Yes, I don't know. Oh, He'll okay. find it. He'll find it. I'll go find the phone. So the Q&A <laughs> continues. Yep. Next question is, how do you guys feel when you travel separately? How do you feel? Honestly, Sam is the one who does a lot of traveling separately. Yeah. I'm more of a homebody. 
and honestly I was getting exhausted of like running around and switching countries every every few weeks so I decided there's gonna be times where I just stay in Canada do work yeah. you can go off and do your thing right. you're more like hyper I, 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 and you guys are bunny I, 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 could, I could travel until I drop dead yes. that's how much I yes, like it you could. So, yeah. I mean, every day on the road is, is an exciting day for me, more or less. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I did I did big solo backpacking trips before I met you. Yeah. Yeah, like two or three. The longest one was a year, over a year and a half. I was traveling in a little bit in South America and mostly in Asia. Mm -hmm. I spent quite a bit of time in India for the first time, a lot of Southeast Asia, China. And so um, there'd be times where I'd be very social, be like hanging out with lots of people, kind of group dynamics. You'd meet up with people. You'd be like, oh, where are you going next? Okay, I'll come with you for that mm -hmm. trip. And then there'd be other times where it could be like weeks on end before I made like any kind of like meaningful uh, connection with someone. Yeah, I so. would say like your recent travels that you've done independently without me, it looks like you have a much busier schedule and you're more oh, active yeah. and like you're running around well, all day long. <laughs> that's, 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 that's me and David. Yeah. You know? That's like the yeah. David effect. I mean, yeah, uh, w when we meet up, we have a detailed itinerary of what we want to do and we're, li we're literally filming <laughs> and they don't sleep <laughs> we, we don't we don't sleep a, a lot <laughs> yeah that's for sure oh some nights God. more than others yeah it, it, the first trip we did to India we, we we barely slept at all because I mean mm -hmm. first off there was jet lag secondly um, we had some seriously delayed flights so we got in at like three or four in the morning a few times and then we had plans that morning and we didn't want to cancel anything so we just yeah. like canceled our sleep i couldn't so, do that like yeah. i'm much more like chill and easy going and i like to just hang out and enjoy the place like i don't have to be doing things every day i'm in a new city yeah i um, mean i would say sam's the opposite so like traveling together like yeah. even when we first started out like that was kind of <laughs> like oh yeah this is different well I've, i think i've learned to chill more with you and i've learned to do more but, so but, it's a compromise but as an example when i met up with david it's like like the, the exact same style as me yeah. except yeah. He, he might even be more more intense and so yeah. i was like yeah i was like taking things up a notch from maybe like eight or nine to mm -hmm. a ten i but, believe um, it but yeah it was tons of fun and um i enjoy both I, I obviously enjoy traveling with you. Oh, thank you. That's that's the best. I am your wife, so I'm <laughs> yeah. glad to hear that. But but it's <laughs> nice to have these these adventures every once in a while as yeah. well. So here's a good one. Since we eat a lot of street food and like we're always yeah. trying new things, someone is asking, uh, do you have gastric heartburn or pain after eating all of the food when you're on a journey or a trip? So when you're like. Whoa, stuffing yourself oh gosh yeah sometimes i mean like so, sometimes we really overdo it like i really overeat i feel <laughs> like know? i eat in moderation and yeah. once i'm full i'm good you're, you're, you're much better at portion control yeah like if i really like something i just keep going and going and going like we've never gotten <laughs> actually no we've gotten sick a few times yeah. we I got food poisoning in vietnam once. i did you did and then we both got it in thailand it was from yes. uh, it was from like from a uh, an egg, an undercooked egg. Okay. Yeah, when we were staying in Chiang Mai. Yeah, and then I got sick once in India. So I've had like two bouts right. of food poisoning in like seven years of yeah. travel. And I think that's pretty. That's good. really good. Prior to meeting you, I got really sick in Bolivia in 2010. I ate pizza with like funky mushrooms. Oh, it was awful. It was the worst food poisoning I ever had. It was so bad. I would go to the like I would go to the bathroom and I didn't know what to do because I had to do both. <laughs> I feel both like, ends. I feel like you should elaborate on what funky mushrooms means, like oh. trippy mushrooms no, or like just rotten mushrooms. Rotten mushrooms. Like I'm eating this pizza and I'm like, there's something off about this. But I'm so hungry and I just like <laughs> that was a really bad idea. I just ate it. Yeah, and then the last time I went to India, I I oh. took um. I took something called Ducarol, which helps prevent you from from getting um, like uh, like food poisoning or even just uh, upset stomach. And then I was also popping some Pepto Bismol pills, mm -hmm. um, and that worked amazingly well. Like the trip I did with David, I didn't have a single issue. Mm -hmm. What about a tip for that? Like a what, tip for yeah, that? What, what's what's your tip regarding that? Honestly, I feel like you just build up your immunity. The more street food you try, and the more yeah. adventurous you are with your taste Hon buds. Honestly, that that's that's the truth. And to be honest, I think more people get sick from restaurant food than street food. 
Yeah. Now, the one tip for street food, though, is if you are traveling to a country where street food is popular, make sure to go to a place that's busy mm -hmm. and that has a lot of locals eating there because there's like there's it's obviously good quality. There's obviously a lot of turnover with the food. Yeah. And it's obviously fresh. Maybe we'll do one more question. One more. And wrap it up. Alrighty, next one is, well, we've kind of answered the first part. We'll talk more about the second, but it says, how do you choose places to go? Are you fond of landscapes or prefer history slash culture choices? What do you think? For me, I'll, I'll speak, I'll go first. Okay, go. So I think um, I come from a very, very small town on Vancouver Island in Canada. Mm -hmm. And I was absolutely infatuated with big cities in my 20s. The bigger, the better. The, the, the more chaotic, the better. I love yeah. Hong Kong. Big cities in Asia like Hong Kong, Shanghai, Seoul, Tokyo. Places like that. Absolutely love. And I still enjoy going to big cities from time to time. But it's funny how, how things have kind of come full circle for me. Now I'm more of a, of a slow-paced traveler. I like more, I like smaller, more underrated destinations. Mm -hmm. I prefer mountains, lakes, forests, rivers to beaches and cities, um, big time. Mm -hmm. Like like on a personal level, uh, I, I highly prefer that now. But at the same time, I still like, I, when I go to a big city, I still enjoy it. I get like swept up by the energy and the things to do. Mm -hmm. But um, I mean, as like, especially for living in the future, I think definitely I would prefer to, to be in a smaller place. Yeah. yeah. I'm just laughing because the dog realized my parents are home. I'm just mm -hmm. gonna open the door for Let him. Let him in. It's my human. It's my human. So picking things back up, how about for you? Yeah, honestly, I, I agree. I was also fascinated by big cities in my 20s, like places like New York and oh, Seoul yeah. and London. It Remember the like, first oh. time we went to New York together before we got married? Yeah, it was like, oh my God. Yeah, we're like, we gotta we live here. We need to here. move here, best city in the world. Well, and I, 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 you know what, even saying that, I mean, I, I still think it'd be fascinating to live in New York for a bit, but the desire isn't as strong as it was. No, no. I, I definitely prefer smaller towns now, just more relaxed vibe and being close to nature. I like yeah. lakes and mountains and yeah. forests and just and greenery and nature in general makes yeah. me happy so that's what we seek out and guys for our, our series coming up on the english channel for argentina mm -hmm. you'll you'll really notice that a, a difference in our travels for that series yeah we really focused on on smaller off the off the radar types of places yeah and yeah just a very different type of travel more hiking more outdoorsy things and with that i think we're going to conclude but i'm gonna bring this closer mm. we need to talk about a milestone we reached a certain milestone on youtube oh, yeah. this week we wanted to say thank you for Thanks, a quarter of a million subscribers yeah which is it, insane it still it still feels surreal i mean yeah. i mean i remember when we first broke like a thousand subscribers yeah. ten thousand subscribers every 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 little mile every milestone no matter how big or small has mm -hmm. always felt a little bit surreal like i can't believe we have that number right? yeah so we so appreciate the support thank you over the years throughout all the different series we've done i mean mm -hmm. yeah it's just so appreciated so yeah we just wanted to thank anyone who's ever commented liked subscribed watched <laughs> thank you for watching yeah thanks so much um but yeah i think we're gonna wrap up the video here we hope you had fun hanging out with us, cooking, eating. Yeah, it's a bit of a different name. episode and welcome back to the channel, Audrey. Why, thank you, <laughs> thank you. So we have a few more videos from Sam's second week in Korea. And then, and then after that, we have the trip out to Atlantic Canada, which we're yes. gonna show. That's gonna be the most recent um, trip that w we will have done mm -hmm. and then we're gonna do the India series I did last year Oh my! and then we're moving on to Argentina so yeah we have got a lot of content we've got a lot of editing to do mm -hmm. and so yeah we need to end our video and get get, 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 back cra to it. get cracking on the computers <laughs> okay bye thanks for watching guys bye